Hello everyone, this is my second video on Queen and Pawn Endgames. Uh, this one is a bit of a different dynamic to it than the last position we looked at. This is actually from one of my own games, but I found it very, uh, very instructive. It's similar to almost any other game like this, with just one pawn uh, and a queen against queen. This is traditionally known as one of the most difficult, tricky, nuanced endgames you can really have. But there's a few tips that I thought you might uh, find useful here. Alright, so it's white to move, and tip number one is, before anything else, centralise your queen. So, after queen f6 check, king c7, queen e5 check, king d8, the queen is now centralised. And you may ask why... I didn't just move there immediately. Here's rule number two. You want to keep the initiative until you feel ready to release it. So you want to keep the initiative of checks, uh, and then when you feel that you've accomplished as much as you, as you can with checking the enemy king, then you can go on to something else. So here I thought I did enough with my queen on e5. It centralized. So now I played f4. And he played queen c1. And now, where should I put my king? Well, first, I felt that my queen was better served on d6. And now, what would you play after king e8? Well, next tip is checkmate can still be a threat even when there's so few pieces left. King f6 here was very strong. And, yeah, I mean, you know, the only way to really prevent it is to play either queen a1, b2, c3, check, uh, and then... Um, uh, queen e5 check will win. So let's say check uh, qu queen e5, queen takes queen. And here, how does white win? Just to test your king and pawn knowledge. Yeah, pawn takes. And even though uh, black has the opposition, that doesn't matter because of where the pawn was. And here white will promote. So that is what would have happened if king e8. Instead, king c8. So what I've done is I've... Uh, another tip is I've got the king to be far away from where the pawn is. And... That can be very, very useful because having the enemy king on f7 would really have annoyed me because I can't really force him away too much. And I need to be able to do that to allow a clear path for my pawn. So after the king's moved away, king f6, queen b2, queen e5, re-centralizing the queen, queen h4. And here, what would you play as white? Would you push your pawn to f5? Well, if you did, you would win if black took the queens off. You'd just win the king and pawn endgame. But if f5, king, queen h8 skewers the king, king e6... Queen e8, check. King d6, queen check. King c5, queen check. And here, I think white would just have to either accept a draw or it would take a very long time to, uh, to win this. Because if queen takes queen, it's a draw. And if the king were to move to, say, d4, black can then play... Uh, let queen b6 check. And 
the king is going to have a very hard time escaping all the checks now because it's out in the open. So, going back, instead of f5, queen e6 first. So again, we're just getting the queen into a better position, but it's still fairly centralised. So king c7, now f5. And what we're having to bear in mind here, this is my biggest uh, piece of advice, is bear in mind where the checks are coming from. What you want to do is be able to have a safe haven for your king. Uh, so that usually involves blocking with the queen at some point, or the queen controlling all the squares uh, that the enemy queen can possibly go to to check your king. So queen h6, king e7, hit, this was my plan, queen g7, queen uh, f7, queen e5, king f8, check. So using a discovered check here. And king d8 was played. So he's trying to get his king uh, sort of near my king and pawn to hopefully blockade or uh, sort of influence the position somewhat. I push with f6, so I'm nearly there. But it does feel like it gets harder from this position because the king has fewer squares to uh, hide uh, and manoeuvre to. So queen g5, queen e7 check, king c8, queen e6 check, queen d6 check, and now I push again. So with queen d6, look at where, where I'm controlling. Every single square the black queen can check my king is controlled by my queen on d6 and no other square. So I've borne that in mind, so he has to play queen, well, doesn't have to, but he plays queen g4 to try and uh, reroute the queen and keep my king from uh, coming out from behind the pawn. Again, I reroute the queen to c6. Queen e8 check. Queen e5. And then I go to d, uh, g7 here. So I've again I've rerouted the queen to now uh, work like a rook in the rook and pawn endgames, where I'm going to move the king to g8, uh, and then I'll have a queen and a pawn both in front of my king. So he plays queen b4 check, and I move the king, and now queen c4. So here the pawn is pinned, so he stopped me advancing it. But now, as long as I'm careful, I should win. So I play king h7, check, block, check. And here I actually play king g7 because what I'm doing is I'm stopping him from doing any diagonal checks. So if he were to check me along the a1, h8 diagonal... I would have queen f6 blocking and also checking him. And then he would have to take and he couldn't then stop my pawn from promoting. So he has to play a check along the file. I block and there are now no more checks for his queen. So he has to play queen d7, pinning the pawn. But now after... Queen e4, just making sure that there are no more uh, checks from his queen. He's practically out of moves because if he moves his queen to c7, what's wrong with queen c7 here? I won't play it so that uh, it might be harder for you. Yeah, if queen c whoops, if queen c7, then queen e8 mate. <laughs> so that would wrap up the game very quickly. And if he keeps the pin with queen a7, then same idea. Queen e8 check. Check. And then just take the queens off, and then I can win nice and comfortably with an extra queen. So here, he can't move the queen along the 7th rank. 
But if he moves the queen off the seventh rank, I'll promote with check. So what he does is he plays king c7, uh, which would yield the same. Uh, king c8, so I'd play king c8, so I'd play queen a8 check. Uh, king c7, queen a7 check. King moves, and then I swap off queens. So, yeah, king c7, and then king g8. And part of the reason I played, que I got the queen to e4 was because there are now no more uh, diagonal squares that his queen can access to pin my pawn. So here, my opponent resigned in this game. And the final tip I'll leave you with is that if the enemy queen, let's say, is on a light square, uh, you're far more likely to control all the squares they can move to to check you if your queen goes to a light square. Uh, not always, it depends if there are pawns or other pieces uh, on the board. But as a general rule, I found that to be the case. So, for example, with this queen e4, uh, it was, yeah, it was controlling all the light squares, so his queen couldn't uh, go onto a light square. So, I hope you've got something from this video. Uh, comment, like, uh, subscribe, hopefully, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.